understand it. No movements. No movements. Yes. And you may close your eyes. Let's focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. No praying in tongues. Just focusing on Jesus. Focusing on Jesus. In this session, I love your pen and your paper to be close to you so that you can write what you will see and what you hear from God. Yeah, but for now, just focus on Jesus. Focus. Jesus, you're welcome in this place. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, your presence, Lord, your glory, Lord. Jesus, we cry out. We cry out, transcendent, my God, we cry out. We cry out for the living God. We cry out. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. O Lord, touch us, Lord, our hearts, our minds. Oh
shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. So I'm here to reveal the person of Jesus Christ to you. Let's bring down all titles. Let's drop all pride. And let's listen to what God is saying. I want to, to read something for you from a song. It's, it's called Companion. Um, this is a song by Mr. Edwards. And it goes like this. I hear him singing over you. He's singing over me. I'm right here. Right where you left me. That's that's God. He's telling you he's right here, right where you left him. All this time, just patiently waiting. The Lord Jesus Christ has been patiently waiting for you. He's been waiting for you. Most of the times, we rend our garments instead of rending our hearts. We rend our garments instead of rending our hearts. But he wants us to rend our hearts as well. Then it goes on to say, not hard to find. I'm right where you left me. I'm right here. Right now. Right now. Then it goes, I came into the garden. In the cool of the evening. Looking for a friendship. But where are you? He is looking for a friendship. But where are you? It goes on to say, just like in that garden, I cried out for Adam. I'm calling out your name. Right here, right now. Is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? You see, this is a radical generation. This is a Joshua generation. This is an apostolic generation. This is a prophetic generation. The intercessors and the watchmen must arise. They must arise. The Lord is calling out for people of prayer, people of character, people of love. It goes on to say that this is God telling you that I want to be your companion. Just like in the garden. So if you are searching for Eden, find it in me. So if you are searching for Eden, find it in Jesus. He's saying, I want to be your companion. Jesus Christ wants to be your closest friend. Then it goes on to say, I walk among the candlesticks, the church. Then it goes like, I walk among the churches, searching for companionship. He has been searching for companionship, seeking you, searching all the hearts of men. If, if anybody's loyal, I'm calling out your name right now. He's calling out your name. When you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. 
Do not harden your heart. I'm not so far away. You are as close as conversation. Imagine how close conversation is. Jesus is saying you are as close as conversation. And he goes on to say, you are so close to me. You are as near as tuned attention. And he goes on to say, you are so near to me. You know, oh, on the cross he says, he was arms wide open, a heart exposed. The bridegroom was exposed because of you, his bride. He was a heart exposed on the cross. So he wants to get to know you, and today is the day you tune in to him. Amen. I'm here to reveal his heart and his mind. You need to get in tune with his heart and his mind so that you can see what he wants to show you and hear what he is saying and feel what he is feeling. What is at the heart of Jesus Christ? There are two major things, worship and intercession. Jesus Christ is at the heart of worship. When you look at Revelation 4, it revolves around worship and intercession. Jesus Christ is also at the heart of intercession. You need to get to know him for yourself. You see, this man not only died for you, but he took your place. It was supposed to be you on that cross, but he took your place and he paid that price. I remember there was a time when I was in prayer. Then I felt the pain of Jesus. And I asked him, why are you feeling this pain? Then he told me, my bride does not love me. My bride does not know me. So I felt his pain. Because I'm tuned into his heart. When he was telling me that, I got so, I got angry, I got upset, and I started to cry. And I was wondering, how can man be this evil, not to care for this man? It hurt me so much. I cried and I cried and I was so angry with people, but he told me, love them. And I was like, what? Love them? They're hating you. They're breaking your heart. Why should I love them? And they told me, I love them. Tell, them. tell them that I love them. Tell them I love them. Then, there was this other time. Again, I was in worship. Then, this is interesting. This is interesting. So, yes, what happened was I was praying. Then, I had an impression and I was late to take off my clothes in the private place. Yes. So, <laughs> then I asked why. Then he told me, this is how my church is. It is naked without me. He told me, the church without me is naked. And he told me, I am the one who covers my church with righteousness, his garment of righteousness. So I was like, okay. And the bride of Christ is very stubborn. Very stubborn. See, like, he, he's been calling out for you. Like, it's a sound of a heart crying out to God. And it's a sound of his heart calling back to you. The Lord is looking for radical believers. This gospel, First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5, did not only come in word, but in power and in the Holy Spirit. This gospel, not only in word, but also has power. Because in Hebrews 4 verse 12 it says, for the word of God it's active, it is living, it is alive, it is energetic, 
it is energizing, it is operative, piercing even to the division of your soul and your spirit and to the joints and your marrow. It goes on to say, it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of your heart. That's the word of God. The word of God must pierce you. The word of God must be active. A first Corinthians chapter one, uh, chapter two, verse four to five. It reads, first Corinthians chapter two, verse four to five, it reads, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. God is not only looking for people of character. Your character is important, it is good, but we need power in this generation. We need the power of God, because the word of God preached must be backed up by the power of God. You have been equipped. You are intercessors. You are priests. You are watchmen. Apostolic people, prophetic people, radical believers, it is time to take up your positions. It is time to take up that position. You need to be contagious believers. You must be contagious to your surrounding, to your sphere of influence. You must if you must infect and affect your surroundings. Everyone who comes into contact to you or with you, they should smell the fragrance of Jesus upon you. Amen. They should see Jesus upon you. There should be something about you which speaks Jesus. Something about you. And in this Christian life, many people may not like this, but there is a process. You have to go through that process. It's very interesting that the children of Israel from Mount Sinai uh, uh, to the Promised Land in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 2. You can read from the Amplified uh, Translation. They would have made that trip in 11 days, but they made it in 40 years, imagine, because of disobedience. Something they would have done in 11 days, it took them 40 years because of disobedience. If you love Jesus, you have to obey his commands. You people, you say that you love Jesus, but where is the hunger? Where is the thirst? Because deep cries out for deep. So what are you crying out for? I'll read from Psalm chapter 42. It reads, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, Where is your God? This is very interesting. I do not know the God you worship, but I know the God I worship. His name is Jesus. Our Lord is not an idol. He is not a wooden thing. He is not a stone. So if you cry out right now, God, are you a stone that you can't hear what I'm saying? Lord, are you wood that you can't hear what I'm saying? We pray without expecting anything. What's that? Our God is alive, he lives and he speaks and he walks and he's talking and he communicates. I love um, 2 Chronicles 7, um, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 to 15. I like what it says. It reads. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will give their sin and heal their land. 
now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. So, let's repent from our sin. If you have any. It's interesting, you see, like, everything you thirst and everything you hunger, that you shall be filled. So what are you thirsting and what are you hungering for? Because you shall be filled. But if you are thirsting and hungering for holiness, you shall be filled with holiness. But are you guys provoked concerning the heart of Jesus? How much are you willing to sacrifice to know this man? The lion of the tribe of Judah. How much and how far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go? Are you willing to tell the untold? Are you willing to risk your reputation, your status, everything, just for him? He loves you so much, if only you knew, if only you knew how much he loves you and he wants to know you. But there must be a fire in you. I love Leviticus 6, verse 13, it says, And fire shall not be put out from the water. Where is a house of prayer? You must be a house of prayer as well. The Lord is not only looking for prayer warriors, but also prayer partners. Where are you hiding is right here. Right here, right now. The Lord Jesus wants to know you. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh my. How many want to receive the fire of God? You can stand. You can put your hand on your bed. Yes. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Have a shake, balabase, balabashi, panabata. Sekeze balabapo, tolo boshoke, balaba. As a shake, balabase, balaba. Ne shake, balabase, balaba shake, balabo. Ma pazege, balaboshi, balabashi, balaba. Ne sekeze, balabashi, balaba. Lord, I release your fire in this place. Ma bashi, balabasa. Lord, I release a passion for Jesus like never before. A hunger for Jesus like never before. A thirst for Jesus like never before. Lord, I awaken love for you in this place. I awaken love for you in this place. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Receive this fire. Baba shake it, Baba shake it, Baba shake it, Baba. The jet is Baba. Baba shake it, Baba shake it, Baba. The jet is Baba shake it. Receive his love as well. Receive his love. Thank you.
Bashiki, 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 Bashi